Hey everybody, welcome. In this video, we're going to try and make a really cool way to edit data. Basically, we'll have the data defaults in a form, and if you go in and edit any of the data, it'll acknowledge that change and ask if you want to cancel or save. To do this, we basically need to take a snapshot of the current data, what comes from the database, and then have state for any of the updated data. When the person saves, we will replace the old data and it'll go back to how it started without the save and cancel option. So it's a little complicated to visualize with just this description. So we're just going to build and see what we get. And I think by the end of this video, it's going to be pretty cool. So we're going to be working inside of the customer component for this video. And you can see here, this is where we display the customer data. And let's get an example open that we can look at. We go through displaying each of the things the customer has. What I want to do is I want to have these be inputs with these values filled into the inputs. So taking a look at our code, we currently have these each in a paragraph. So let's go ahead and replace these with input. So input type is going to be text and then value is going to be the customer ID. So it's going to look a lot like this. And this will be self-closing, so there we go. And we're going to have pretty much the same thing twice more. So I'm just going to do copy paste and get rid of customer name in industry, putting them here, customer.name and customer.industry. So that is how we can get them in inputs. And it's going, oh, it's hideous, man. I, I imagine this is what you look like when you wake up in the morning. Oh, that was terribly mean. I don't know if I should put that in there, but like it's the truth. So let's make this look just a little bit better. We're going to do all the styling at the end, but what we can do is we can add a class real quickly. This is a great opportunity for me to try out the multi-line editing with Visual Studio Code. So command option down, down. I think that's going to be control alt plus down on Windows. And from here we can say class is equal to and I'm just going to say M-2, which comes from Tailwind. So if you're just jumping in in the middle, this class ain't gonna do nothing. But if you have Tailwind, class M.2 or M-2 is going to space these out a little bit. And what's the secret to get them on a next line? Uh, I think we could say block for now. Let's see if that did it. Yep, there we go. And now the multi-line thing messed it up. So let's undo for a second. And lastly, I'm going to add a padding of two. So, ah, that's ugly. We want that to be uh, padding X of two. All right, there we go. That looks a little bit better. So now what we can do is we can go in and edit these values, but we want to keep track of the previous values and the new values. So we're going to have some interesting setup in state. Right now we have a customer. What I want to do is I want to create a new state, which is going to be, let's call it temp customer. So this is just the temporary data we're typing in, and this will be set temp customer. And then for use state, we'll just keep this as the default because we're actually going to get these values during the request at the same time when we set customer. We can also say set temp customer. So now we basically have a copy of the data in two different state variables. So what we can do is we can change this temp customer and then when we save, just put that back into customer or something like that. We'll see how it goes. All right, so how are we gonna do this? First thing, I wanna change these values to temp customer, temp customer. And this is going to allow us to change the temporary data. So let's save that, take a look. Temp, oh, Geesh. All right, there we go. Now you're not going to be able to go in here and edit these because we don't have an on change property on our input. So you can see a warning about that. You provided a value prop to a form field without an on change. This will render a read only field. So what we will do is we will create an on change property. So we're not going to do it for this one because I don't want to be able to change the ID. So let's just go ahead and create one here on change. And this is going to take a function, so I'm going to define that in line here, E being the event. And what we're going to do is we're just going to update the temporary state. So we will say set temp customer. And 
the way we're going to define this new customer is we're going to first take all of the properties from the existing temporary customer. So we'll say temp customer. And then we're going to replace the name property with e dot target dot value, which is what's being typed in to the input. So we'll save. Let's just try that out, see if we get anything wonky. I'm gonna open the console as well. All right, so we should be able to change this value. And so far that looks great. When you're doing more complex state changes, what you could do just as a way to kind of check yourself is you can have a use effect and have this execute on any state change. Oh, sorry, I said state, so I typed state. Use effect, and this will take a function and we're not going to pass an empty dependency array. We're just going to leave that out. And inside of here, we can just console log kind of a snapshot of the state. So first we will do the customer. And then next we will do the temp customer. All right, so let's save that and see if this gives us anything useful. So as we update one of these values, we can see all of the state being displayed and you can see the temp customer data being updated and the original customer data not being updated. This can help you stay sane, just to make sure everything is going the way you expect. Let's do something similar for the other input. So it's gonna be fairly similar, so I'm going to copy this line here and paste it here. The only thing we're going to do is we're going to change this here to industry. I think that should be it. So now we can go in here and we can change the industry as well. So far, so good. And since the ID is not going to be editable anyway, so let's just not make it an input. I probably should have done that from the beginning, but uh, can't go back now. So we will just change this to a paragraph, but I want to keep all of the other stuff. So we're going to keep the class. So it should look something like this minus the value equals. Let's take a look. It looks pretty good. If you want, you could do like ID whatever you want, that's gonna give you that. Or you could just hide it. Of course, the ID is not really an essential component to this application. So if you just get rid of it, that works too. So what we need to do is we need to have a save and cancel button pop up when someone changes these values. So there's a few different ways of doing this. You could just create a state variable that's like changed and set that to true when you enter these on change event handlers. That's probably the easiest way to do this. So we're going to start with that and we might finish with that as well. We'll see how it goes. I'm kind of going as I feel here. So we'll just try it out. Changed and set changed and use state. So again, we will uh, actually, let's console log that as well. So console.log changed. Let's go ahead and set that inside of on change. So set changed to true. Same for right here, set change to true. Let's go ahead and try that out. We will type in something here and you can see it goes from undefined to true. We could default that to false. It doesn't really matter though. So if we want that to be false, we will put false in there. It's probably just better practice that way. If you explicitly check if it's false being equal to false, then you're not going to get any weird behavior. Now what we can do is we can conditionally render something if changed is true. So we'll ask is changed true? If it is, show a cancel and save button. So within this customer ternary, because we only want it to display if there is a customer, we can place this right before the final div and we will say curly braces changed. If so, then we can return a paragraph for now just saying changed, otherwise null. So that's how we can get a visual difference on the page. So I change this, it says changed. Now a very important thing to note is that when we change that value, the state for changed is set to true. However, if we change the value back to what it originally was, it's still considered changed. This behavior might be fine if you don't want to worry about it because it does get a little bit complex. Basically, you will need to check the temporary values and compare them against the actual values every time you change to see if they are the same. And if they are, you can set changed to false. So in that situation, you would change this back to computing 
And on that change, you would compare the name to see if it's the same as the original value, and you would compare the industry to see if it's the same as the original value. And if it is, then you could set change to false. We might look at that later, but for now, I just wanted to finish the buttons because I think that's a higher priority. So let's go ahead and create our buttons. Here where we have a paragraph, we can create a button. And this is going to be save. And we also have a button to cancel. Which one comes first? That's totally up to you. I'm going to put the cancel one on the left. And then we will need to surround this all in a fragment. Place that at the beginning and at the end. There we go. So now we should have cancel and save. And these should not show up on initial load until you change something and then you can have the option to save. The cancel button is going to be the easiest, so let's deal with that first. We will say on click, and the only thing you have to do here is reset the temporary state to be the same as the original state. And inside of here, the way we're gonna do that is we're going to say set temp customer. Inside of here, we're going to pass all of the original properties from the customer save let's try this out so do a quick refresh change sony hit cancel and it goes back to sony at that point we can set change to false so set changed to false so that's it for the cancel button fairly easy now let's move on to the save button this one is going to be a little bit different because this is where we're actually going to need to make a request to the back end to update that data. So because fetch requests are usually pretty large, I like to use them in external functions. So I will say on click and inside of here, I'm only going to put the function name, which is update customer. And I'll define that, what is this? I don't know what that came from, but whatever. We're going to define this after the initial functions. So we will say function update customer. We will define a URL, which is going to be base URL plus API slash customers slash plus the ID for the customer we are working with. And that's going to be passed into fetch. And we'll have a dot then, dot then, and a dot catch. This is going to be a post request, so we need to pass in that additional object here and say method is post. The headers is going to be an object, and inside of this object we are going to have the content type, which is going to be application slash JSON. And then lastly we are going to have the body, which will be json.stringify passing in our updated customer. I think this should work. Inside of the then, we will have the function, and this is going to have the response, return response.json, and dot then. Inline function here, and this is going to have data. We'll console log the data, which should be the updated object from the database. Let's just try this, see how wildly off we are. Updated customer is not defined on line 44. Sorry, this should be temp customer. Okay, so let's refresh. We're gonna say Sony, we'll hit save. And now do a refresh and take a look at that. It stays the same. So the change is being made to the database successfully. Now we just need to update the UI accordingly. So on a successful response, we can say set changed to false. That should get rid of the buttons. So now when we change the data, we can hit save. It saves and the buttons go away. So there you have it. The functionality is all there. Let's say in theory our URL was wrong. Let's just mess it up here. It should be the case that we change the data. We hit save. The request fails and these buttons don't go away until you get a correct network request you're not going to be able to get rid of these buttons unless you hit cancel and take it back to what it originally was so i want to try something first i'm going to change back our api url and what i want to do is i want to add a bunch of characters to these inputs hit save taking a look at our original customer and our temp customer we can now change one of these values 
hit cancel, and it all goes back to the beginning. Like, what in the world? Well, this is the important part. If we want this page to be functional multiple times, we need to make sure that the, the updated temp customer is copied over to the original customer data when the data is saved in the database. So this data that we're getting as a response, this should now be the new original customer data. So it's going to be very similar to what we did up here, set customer to data dot customer and the temp should already be up to date. So set customer data dot customer. Let's try this concept now. We'll just start fresh refresh. All right, so I'm going to add a bunch of characters here and add a bunch of characters here. We will save. Now let's change one of these, hit cancel, and it still looks good. So as I'm changing this, we should just get predictable functionality. So far everything seems like it's working. Yeah, I like the way this is working. I think I've covered most of the different possibilities. Yep, looks good. At this point, I would probably comment out these console logs just to not be super obnoxious. And then I would style this, make it look a little bit better. And of course you could go back to the thing I was saying about comparing the values to see if you change the data and then change it back to what it originally was. Maybe that's what we'll cover in the next episode. Stay tuned to find out.